This episode of the Wedding Film School Show is brought to you by Musicbed, the best music licensing platform for wedding filmmakers. Head over to themusicbed.com and enter our code WFS on checkout to get a free month on your annual wedding subscription. Now, on to the show. We're kind of having a lot of conversations internally about kind of how we like to talk to people. Part of our philosophy, Jared, is like, ask as many questions as you can and be a good listener. The best way to understand what someone's needs are to ask good questions because people like answering questions. Like they don't want to be told what to do. Couples don't know how much something's worth unless you tell them. Mm -hmm. yep. So they only value it if you tell them it's valuable. Always asking permission, asking questions is, is a really big deal. Like asking people, even when you're on site with them, do you mind if I grab like a couple shots of this? No. Even something like, can I fix your dress? Mm -hmm. Don't touch people without permission. Everything in your relationship with this person is based on questions. So ask good ones, for goodness sake. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Wedding Film School Show. Jason is fresh off a uh, vacation down yes. to Tennessee. Jason, how did that go? Um, it's really beautiful down there. I mean, I'll say like, I don't know how anyone there um, can really function physically with the food that they eat. It's delicious, but it is, I will say one good thing. If you wanna go to, there's a lot of good things about, we went down to like Pigeon Forge, Gatlinburg area. If you wanna go to an amusement park, it's great to go to an amusement park like Dollywood. That's 50% of the people in there can't make it up the stairs. So you don't have to wait in any lines and any of the roller coasters because, you know, they're, it's just, um, we'll say an older crowd. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but um, no, we had a great time, a lot of fun um, with our whole family so yeah it was great cool cool much needed break before the wedding season kicks off which we're kind of heading into here in new england it's uh you know as we're filming this it's uh in april and we're about to kick off really hard kind of in may um and we're kind of having a lot of conversations internally uh about kind of how we like to talk to people right mm. um a big part of what we do on a regular basis myself included almost all, all i do now is like talk to brides and talk to planners and just networking and a lot of just like relationship building. And when you're shooting 230 weddings in a year, it tends to be pretty hard to have authentic conversations with people um, that are actually fruitful and um, actually make people feel like they're not just a number, right? And they're not just uh, a bill that they're paying us. Um, and so it's something that I think we've gotten pretty good at over the years. And so that's what we want to talk about in today's episode, right? Don't you think too, that like, this is, if you're, if you're wondering what is like holding me back or what's setting this one person apart and you only look at their work, you're missing a big part of really why people are successful. And, and like when people are like, why are you successful? Why do you, why do you guys do well? I mean, I think our work is good, and but I think the way that we um, are interested in the people we work with, our couples, the vendors we're around, the idea of like, can I be like asking good questions and understanding and, and like always getting permission to kind of tell someone something about you or themselves or whatever, that is usually what separates people who are doing really well to maybe people who are struggling a little bit, little bit is how well do they – make a person feel listened to? Do they ask good questions? Um, do they communicate information in a way that makes a person feel comfortable? And usually the best way to communicate anything with anyone is to make it feel, and it's not just make it feel, but like the person has to know, you're asking this because you're interested in me. You're, you're, you're interested in me. You want to give me the best possible service and do the best job you can, not just like you're sitting there going through a punch list of mm -hmm. all the things you need to tell a person. Mm -hmm. And so we're always, we're like part of our philosophy, Jared, is like ask as many questions as you can and be a good listener and, and try to get people the information they need behind understanding what their needs are. And the best way to understand what someone's needs are, are to ask good questions. Yep. Yep. I think um, we tend to fall into this trap as wedding vendors, as you know, videographers, especially probably is you book someone. There's this long period of time in between when you book them and the wedding, right? Sometimes it's like two years for us um, and people can kind of fall off. 
people forget the things that you talked about. Um, and so what we try to do is have these little touch points in between. And one of kind of the main touch points that we're going to talk about today is uh, five questions that we ask our couples pre-wedding. Um, and usually this is done through a questionnaire. Um, I would highly recommend like a CRM questionnaire. That's what we do. Um, as opposed to like a PDF because it can automatically go out. Um, because Lord knows, like <laughs> we don't have the time. And I think that's the, the thing that a lot of filmmakers fall into is like, oh shoot, I haven't sent this questionnaire out to all my couples for the year, or it's sent at a weird time. And a CRM really kind of allows you to send at like very specific times that I think are, um, helpful to the couple like i like to send it probably two months before well yeah when like you knowing when to ask a question is just as important as what questions you ask yeah totally because they're ready for it like for instance the reason why we send this questionnaire out um two months beforehand is usually by that time the photographer has worked with the couple on their timeline it's pretty much etched in stone at that point there's no changes i hate having a conversation sometimes you'll get brides who are like hey i want to have a conversation with you six months beforehand and i'm like okay usually i do about two months beforehand because everything's you know uh, you know uh, logged away at that point and good to go um six months beforehand there's a lot of things that can yeah change. i think the point is is like these questions that we're going to be talking about a we think yeah. everyone these are questions that you should ask in some way maybe you change the wording a little sure. but in general you should ask these questions but also when you ask a question is as just as important as what you ask and so we will try to do our best to kind of tell you when we ask these questions because maybe some of them are actually happening multiple times in the consult and in the uh, like in the sales process you're yeah, talking about some we might yeah. ask but but regardless like i would say all these are, are a couple months before the wedding i ask all these questions beforehand typically no. most of this stuff the person needs to have something settled on their wedding day yeah yeah and, and i would so, say that like we do like to repeat ourselves so like in the consultation sometimes years in advance, I'll mention things. This questionnaire that we're sending, the five questions pre-wedding, um, is a good reminder of those things. But I always ask these specific questions so, a couple months before, speaking every of, single time. Speaking no. of consultations, it, like Jared said, a lot of what we're talking about in this episode is primarily after the sales call. It's they're your couple. You're, you're trying to get them prepped for the day. Yep. We are doing a episode of Saleable, which is our like mini podcast that Jared does about how to have better consultations. And he's going to talk through some of what he does on a sales call, um, some questions he asks on a sales call and various other things. So if you want to check that out, check out uh, the Wedding Film School show channel or, you know, you just listen. And um, yeah, these, they're shorter, smaller little episodes. They're very sales driven. So check those out. Yep. But but today we're going to be talking about, like Jared said, five questions to ask your couples. Um, a lot of it is going to happen either in a written form. Yep. Um, but that being said, everything that's in a written form, I think the primary thing for us is these are things that you want to reiterate in a conversation. Yeah. I think it's pretty common for most videographers to send out a questionnaire beforehand. Mm-hmm. Um, so these are questions that are um, spoken about uh, or, or listed on a questionnaire. Um, but then we like to have uh, on the phone or Zoom consultation probably like two to four weeks before the wedding. Yeah, I'm not sure everyone does that. I don't know. That's what I'm just saying. That's what we do. What we that's do. what we found uh, really works well. Um, that's what I think a lot of couples are educated to understand that they have to do. Um, you don't have to do it that way. I've just found that it's probably what most people do. Yeah, we um, send a questionnaire and then we have a phone call to talk about the questionnaire. Right, right. But And it makes people, we find they're more comfortable to have the conversation when they have prep time, yeah. essentially. So. And, it, and I would say it's probably not always this way. I don't always have this conversation if I'm dealing with a planner that I work with a lot. Sometimes I'll just have the conversation with the planner with no bride or groom present. Um, and so it's not always the case, it kind of is a case by case, depending on who I'm talking to, but I would say 95% of the time, these, this is what we Well, do. we could even call this five things you got to know about every couple before sure. you go. Sure. But it's like, like at the end of the day, questions are a great, you know, you need to ask questions to yep. learn about people. So what, yep. what's the first question we like yep. to ask people? So first question is who are your vendors? Um, and we like to do this for quite a few reasons, right? You know, who's going to be there. You know what your relationship is with the team. Um, 
you can reach out to people that maybe you've worked with in the past, network a little bit here. You can say like, hey, I love this photographer. I've worked with her a million times. Drop her a line on Instagram and say like, hey, excited to work with you um, in a couple of weeks for their wedding. Let me know if there's anything. It's just a really great way that you can, I think, get a good grasp on like what this day is going to be. If you haven't worked with a photographer in the past, knowing that beforehand, you're going to have to put a little bit more effort into it, right? Mm -hmm. What are some things that are beneficial to uh, to you in, in knowing the well, vendor team? Any question to me is about like what other questions I can it allow me to ask, yeah. right? And so the simplest form of the question is usually best because if you ask a person like a bunch of other, like, you know, it, it just opens up the door for like the, what I really want to know, which is, what are their handles? What is their phone numbers? What is their, like all the things that help me to actually do what I need to do, which is text the photographer or yep. email the photographer. Just a basic logistics like, side of things. Like, but also yeah. marketing and sales. Right. Right. Because I have, the amount of money we make off of those Instagram hashtag or Instagram handles being given to us. It streamlines our post process, right? Mm -hmm. So when we deliver, this is just from our questionnaire. When we deliver a teaser, we immediately are going to that questionnaire, looking at all the vendors, tagging all the vendors, making sure it's the correct vendor, by the way, because there's a lot of, I don't know, any hipster name you thought of for your business, there's probably someone else with that name out there. Something in Oak, probably. Something that's in probably, Oak. Yeah, or, that, that's the name. Salt and Wind or yeah. <laughs> Whatever it is. And so you want to make sure you have the right one, yeah. which we have unfortunately probably tagged people wrong a few times. Yeah. But in general, we do it. And, and like every time I'm tagging people in, on Instagram, I get so much more reach. Totally. And it's like huge difference. Like we're talking difference. like five to 10% more reach. Maybe when, more when you're tagging people. Maybe double. Yep. I've seen, but regardless, it's like, so we want relationships with these people we want sales relationships with these people in the future we want to be able to reach out we have a lot of things we're going to do with that information yep. the couple doesn't necessarily need we don't tell the couple all this like they don't care one way or the other we're not going like thank you so much for giving me all your vendors now i can actually do you know that it's really important to have the vendor relationship with the photographer very good now i will email yep. like all that junk yep. that being said you can say something like oh I love that photographer. They're amazing. Yep. Your day, that um, that means so much to couples yep. when they realize that the vendor team likes each other. I've literally, I've had so many couples, I don't know about you, Jared, but they've said, oh, that makes me feel so much better. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 I think it does give you the kind of that logistics and every once in a while I'll have to dig into that be, and be like, hey, the DJ isn't here. Uh, I'm just gonna shoot him a text and say, hey, do you mind if I plug into your sound system? like?" I know you're setting up somewhere else, but I'm literally half a mile away on this estate. <laughs> well, <laughs> like, I don't want to wait for you. I want to be ready to go. Well, let's get like, specific about helpful. that one, yeah. Jared, because you you said ask them who their vendors are, but that's not actually all we ask. We, well, have we ask on, them for the contact information and on our console hashtag, on our form. Yeah. It, it says, "Give me." We ask them what are their Instagram handles yep. specifically. Yep. Then yep. we say, "What is the photographer's contact information?" Yep phone number and email. Yep. What is the DJ's contact information, yep. phone number and email. We get as all the information we need to do our social media and to do our pre-wedding reach outs yep. and communications with every person on the team. Now, planners will fill that out for you. So I was just gonna say, when you're working with a planner, our approach is a little bit different. Um, we actually, I don't include this on our creative treatment because mm -hmm. most of the time planners will send their own PDF. Mm -hmm. So I'll keep that PDF on file. Um, sometimes I'll even have the timeline on it. Although most of the time, and we'll, we'll talk about the timeline. Most of the time I like to get the timeline in, in my own kind of language. Well, like, you don't want to know when the, when the forest is going to be served. setting up. No, no, I don't care about that. Um, so whittle it down to, to what's helpful for you and your team potentially. But, um, but yeah, that, that's what I'll do. And especially if we work with certain planners, like all the time, I actually have specific, creative treatments. Uh, we call our, our kind of pre-questionnaire creative treatment because uh, there's a lot of creative details in there um, specific to the planner. So like some planners don't want me to yeah. ask certain questions. We have a yeah. questionnaire for the plan, like customized for certain planners. Yep. And then we have 
a version of the creative treatment that excludes questions that a yep. planner might want to ask yep. or might want to answer for their couples. Yep. And But some people, some planners are like, nah, I don't care. Mm -hmm. Make them do it. Yep. So a lot of planners are like, no, please don't even ask. Yep. It's annoying to them. Yep. So that being said, I do still think like, even if the you're in a situation where you are still speaking to the couple, but maybe there's a planner involved and they are handling that for them, having a conversation about it yeah. on the phone. And, and what I was going to say originally was we send this form out. I would recommend everyone have a phone call to go over any que pre-wedding questionnaire that they might send. Yeah. I would highly recommend that. Yeah. I think you should get on the phone because it's not about the information that they're telling you. It's about what you want to say about that information. Mm -hmm. So yep. we always do that. So basically yep. we're asking them who the vendors are. And I think that's really important, yep. right? Yep. Yep. It spells out the day. It's, it's kind of like it gives you a good baseline of logistics, right? Um, the next one is what is your timeline? Yes. Um, this so seems so basic, right? It is. I mean, if you don't know the timeline beforehand, you're kind of walking in blind. Um, and I, I think it's allows us to kind of what you just said. It allows us to see what they're throwing at us. And then us being like, this is workable. We're going to need a little bit of time here, or we're just going to have to make certain adjustments. Right? Like that's probably the most important thing. Um, mm -hmm. and it's probably what I spend most of my final consultation going over with the couple. Right? Yeah. I would say, it's really important, and I, and I agree with you 100%, because a good question will always lead to a good conversation. Mm -hmm. And, you know, is it a basic question? Yeah. Your timeline is a basic question. Like you, of course, every I think a lot of people are asking that question. Right. I don't think a lot of people are doing the right stuff with the answer that the couple's giving them. Yeah. Like they're not taking what's – it's a T-ball sales opportunity. Or – creative process opportunity like or just covering your butt opportunity like there's so many things that you can do and, and people are i think squeamish about telling a person like your timeline is bad in a nice way yep it doesn't work or hey if you want me to do this i know you bought this one package but you need to buy more mm -hmm. for you to be most happy I, I just find when i ask about the timeline and i'm going through it with people it usually answers a lot of subsequent questions, mm -hmm. right? Like I'm going through and I'm talking to them about, okay, what time's your ceremony? Okay, it's at five o'clock. That means I'm gonna be setting up at 4.30. That means that I need to be um, done shooting you by 4.30. So if you want me to be shooting you right up to the time of your ceremony, that doesn't fly. So it kind of solves the problem. Like either I leave early or I miss certain things or you hire a second videographer. So it kind of, it, as I'm going through the, like they can see my perspective on the day really well as I'm working through mm -hmm. like, okay, I'm gonna need this here. How can we solve this together? Well, basically we're using this question maybe differently than other people. That's why we included it because sure. to us, the question is really an opportunity to have the conversation we wanna have, yep. which is like, that's not gonna work or you're gonna want a second shooter yep. or even like, you just oh. force them to make their own decisions. Mm -hmm. like Because when you force them to see it from your perspective, you're like, there's no way I can be in two places at the same time if you want to have the groomsmen being shot at this part and I'm getting you in your dress at this part. You know, that doesn't really work, well, does it? Oh, he, you know, uh, what are some options? Okay, you can either hire a second videographer or I can just get some other shots of the groom at this part. It's not going to be as much as I could get if I had a second videographer, but that's a choice that you're now having to make. I had a it wedding. bells you out. Yes, yeah. I was going to say this question asked with the right response from you yeah. will cover your butt in the future. Like yep. I had a wedding where the person's like, "Oh, it's really important to me. I rented this car. It's this fancy car, and I want shots of my dad helping me get in the car." And I looked at the schedule and I'm like, but you also want me to be X and I know how that's going to go. Yep. Like I know that this car could show up at any time. The dad could be ready or not ready. There's so many things about what she wants that just weren't going to work. Yep. And I was like, and she wanted a bunch of coverage of the guys, but Oh, it's fine. They're really close. How close? 15. No matter how close the person says that person is yep. to them, they're not close. Yeah. It's like immediate, like uh, uh, what is it? Birds flight distance. It's like, yeah, if I was to like leave from here right now, but truth is, I have to go get my car. It's in a parking lot. 
three stories underground. Like I'm gonna have nice. to go there and park in a, in a a parking garage four stories above ground. Gotta get my gear like, in and out of both houses. Yeah, yeah, I gotta come in. Yeah. Like and so you know how it actually works. Yeah, and yeah. so I'll say stuff like, if you really want this covered, then he needs to get ready at 10 a.m. Yep. I will show up from 10 to 11, then I will show up to you. So I make it seem terrible. (laughs) Yes. Or just like literally you can make the sacrifice. Yeah. I can cover the coverage, but I can't be in two places at once. Yeah. You would think that's self-evident, Jared, to people. It is not evident. No, no. They're not thinking about you. You have to be realistic about like this person more than likely, hopefully it's their first wedding that they've ever planned. So they're probably not going to be super, um, cognitive of of what people are doing throughout the day so it's like they just plan the day they're like oh they'll get it they'll they just, just think here are the things i want i spent a lot of money and they're just gonna get it and throughout the day you're like well it's actually just impossible and they're like oh yeah i didn't even think about but that. here's the point but that's your job yeah. yeah here's the point the question is a better way to say that mm-hmm. than to just come out and say i looked at your schedule that you sent me and, and it it's blows. terrible <laughs> like yeah <coughs> but <coughs> Because what I'll typically say is, let's talk about your question. What? Let's talk about your schedule. Yeah. And then I might say, one thing I noticed is yeah. this. What would you? Because again, another question will come out of yeah. that. What would you like me to do here? Do you yeah. want me to come? Like, how yeah. do you want this handled? It, then there's the upsell. Yep. Then you can make money through this if you ask good questions. You can. You want to not sell salesy. Yeah. Respond to a problem the customer brings up. Don't just do it in a salesy way. Ask a good question. Let them tell you what they want. Yeah. Solve a problem for them with your product. Don't just offer the product out of the blue. Yeah. If a person sees like, oh, I really, if they, if you get the person talking about, I really want footage of me and my dad getting into this car, yeah. you know, they're either going to buy something. I think in this case, they chose not to buy anything. But you know what they also didn't do? Yell at me Complain when I delivered the yep. film that it didn't have something because yep. I told him explicitly, since you're not getting this, yep. I'm not covering it. Yep. 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 We have it had, uh, happen all the time. Um, something I have to talk to the team about a lot. It's like uh, even at the end of the night, when you get to the end of the night, it's like usually we stay for like an hour of like open dance or stuff. Unless the schedule, we've, we've talked about it and we're like they're doing a send off or something like that. We've had people surprise us at the end of the night with a, with a send off. Um, or on, on the timeline that they give us, it says, Hey, send off at the end of the night. We have to address that send off. If their 10 hours of coverage ends at nine o'clock and they're expecting me to stay till 10 o'clock, I have to tell them, Hey, either. And, and I have to essentially make our team salespeople like, Hey, I, I noticed this, uh, we're here until nine, uh, cause we're starting at 11, um, you know, 10 hours of coverage. Uh, you want us to stay until the send off at the end of the night or is that not matter and they're like yeah we really want you there and be like okay we're at the 10 hours do you want us to extend to that point Did yeah it's like cover that the question that leads to the questions yeah right and, and then and they're and like oh yeah that's fine how much is it okay yeah totally or uh no you know great i just solved the problem yeah i don't need to be there i'm yeah. gonna leave and they're not gonna be like offended at me like in yep. everything you're doing with a couple you're getting permission yep multiple times throughout yep. the process per, like permission to pose them permission yep. to do x y and z permission to leave yep. like if you say i think it's totally wrong to say well i hit 10 hours i'm out yeah i think everything should be like explained to someone so that they feel um taken care of yep yep so anyway i, I you, think you might be listening to this to being like oh you would charge someone extra to be able to cover like an extra hour i would say yes and then if they decide not to cover it and then day of, you're like, I really want to cover it. You make the decision day of, like, I'm just going to stay for an extra hour and be the good guy. And then they think you're if great. If that's a decision you want to make. But they have no expectation that you are going to stay that P- People. Because cu- they made that decision. Yes. Yeah. You know, couples. showed it was important or not important to you. Couples don't know how much something's worth unless you tell them. Mm-hmm. Yep. So they only value it if you tell them it's valuable. Yep. So if you say to someone like, I'll stay and it costs this much money and then you do it for free, they're viewing it as getting $400. Yep. If they think you're supposed to stay, they're viewing it as like, you're taking something that they're offended about and and turning it into something that they're delighted over. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I think it's like, so many people don't take these layups because they ask, they either just rely on a questionnaire. Like, do I really need to ask them their schedule? Not really. 
I you want just to, look at it, I guess. Yeah. I've shot tons of weddings where like I'm not able to speak to the couple and I just look at the schedule and go. No. Yep. I've shot enough weddings. I don't need to actually hear anything out of these yep. couples, really. I'm doing it for their benefit so that they know what to so they're gonna be the most excited and happy with what I do. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the way you need to think about a question about the schedule is like you are solving some of the biggest problems every wedding creative has where a person, they don't understand what they're buying no matter what they say. They don't understand what you're going to do the day of. They're, they're maybe nervous about the schedule or they're really ambitious. They're planning all way too much and their their expectations are way too high mm-hmm. for everyone. That is the issues. If you see any thread in a Facebook group about someone who's mad, vast majority of the time it's because the creative didn't explain and set expectations very well about what they were going to be shooting or what they were going to be doing and all that stuff. And so I think this is just, it's not so much that you're trying to actually learn their schedule. I would hope you would learn their schedule in an email or in the questionnaire and that would be good enough. Yep. And I would say most of the time when you're receiving a schedule that a photographer has worked, it's pretty generic. Like most people want a solid half an hour before the ceremony of like nothingness. Sometimes church weddings can be a little bit weird, but it's pretty standard at this point, guys. Like, you know, unless you're working with a really weird photographer or something. Well, that brings up a good point out of the box. Yeah. Which is one thing I will let you know, if you're listening, if you, you don't make changes and recommendations to the schedule that, piss off the photographer or the wedding planner <laughs> yeah like i this is like the specific critique i've heard of wedding creatives from wedding planners is they will say like that's not going to work and then they recommend an alternative timeline that doesn't keep in mind what the what the planners needs are at all yeah don't do that that will kill you in this industry yep. if there is a big issue and they have a wedding planner even a day of coordinator, like they can be some of the worst. Are they the most high powered people? People, no, they're not. The people who are just showing up from the venue, but they can make your life a living hell, mm-hmm. right? And they and they and also they can also be really great to work with. They can give you tons of referrals, all that stuff. Don't like it's better to say like, hey, I noticed this, and then they give you you have some issue with the schedule. And say, hey, would it be okay if I talk to your planner about this? Yeah, I would say, or, or, or I'll, I'll, talk, I'll, I'll, we'll coordinate that with the photographer. You don't need to worry about that. Yeah, but yeah. Just I, if there was a big thing that I wanted changed in the timeline, I wouldn't even bring it up to them on the phone. I would contact the planner separately and be like, "Hey, I was on the phone with them. I noticed this. What do you think?" This is I might be really bring it hard. up to the couple, but it depends on what it is. If it was something having to do with just because I putting myself in the mind of a bride, I don't want her to think there's any problems at all ever. Like, and so it maybe the planner has a reason why certain things are a certain way. There's no way around it. I just will approach them separately and be like, send them a text. Hey, I noticed this. And then she could be like, that's a good point. I didn't even think about that. Or this is why we're doing it. And I don't even have to bring it up to the couple. I think I'll just make it work. Like whatever. If it was something like what I would bring up to the couple would be more, is this super important to you? This thing I noticed, is this mm-hmm. an important thing to you? Did you ask for this? Mm-hmm. I would want to know like if it was really important to the couple or not. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I, but I wouldn't recommend, um, I wouldn't recommend changes and things like that. Yep. To, like you don't want, cause what planners will say is like, Oh, this, I, th- I let this person talk to my couple and now they're all stressed and yeah. they're yeah. messing with me saying, exactly. exactly. Why is this schedule messed up? You yeah. don't want to sow any of those seeds. Yep. You want to make sure that you're not causing issues. And so if, if there's a planner involved and you got a schedule, Assume that this person did it for a reason. So that's yep. the last thing I'll say. Uh, so number three is what relationships are sensitive. Um, and that's like, you mean like within the concepts of the Yeah, the family relationships, parties. friend relationships. Like uh, I've found this question to be super helpful and I'll refer back to it day of like almost every single time to be like, who's divorced? Who hates each other? Are people cordial? Um, did someone die recently? Um, like... Just being like, you know, I've had assistants in the past be like, where's mom? Oh, mom died a month ago. Like, you know, uh, what are you doing, dude? Like, literally, it says it in the thing that you have access to. And like, you know, I have to yell at people about that kind of stuff. Pay attention. But pay attention. That stuff's super important. Like, and and um, 
understanding the dynamics. People might be grieving like, um, you know, they might not hate you. It's just the fact that mom died a month ago and they're going to interact a certain way or, you know, when. Well, think about like mom died a month ago. Everything is going to be different. Yeah. Yeah. Like there's a lot of things that are going to. So it's like not just a relationship question of like, how are they going to act? Right. But it's going to affect your timeline. It's going to affect like, oh, they're not going to do a mother's son dance. Yep. Because mom died. Yep. You know, and so. Understanding why those things are happening. And then also like. If people are sick, if mom is sick, dad's sick, you want to shoot the crap out of that day and and be sensitive. We had someone recently who was like, uh, I think it was last August, mom was very sick. Uh, she watched the ceremony from a window yep. inside. You shot that wedding. Yep. She was, uh, the, the wedding was happening outside. She did not want to be seen. I didn't see mom all day. She no, and it affected corners. every single thing about how we shot, right? Yep. Because like we weren't, we didn't have full access to the building. Yep. It was pretty much like don't go searching around, which we normally would do. We normally go upstairs, right, and go <laughs> open Creep every into door. Into people's rooms. <laughs> oh, open every door. See yeah, yeah. where the good light is. Yeah, Check yeah. out the hotel. Yeah, yeah. Right. And this this wedding, we were like, mm, and we we basically built our prep around the situation. Yep. Right. And it's like there's a lot of there's a lot of things that you need to keep in mind in in like you have a great opportunity to win brownie points with a couple too. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, tell me about this. Oh, you know, are, are we doing anything special with that? Oh yeah, my, 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 he's actually gonna dance with his sisters, mm-hmm. right? Oh, that's so, that's amazing idea, I love that. Like, the other thing about it is, is storytelling, mm-hmm. right? The story that you tell is about this family. And if you're like, now, there's some things you can't know. Like, how many times have we been like, remove that clip of that bridesmaid. She slept with the groomsmen. Yeah, yeah. Right? Like, weird stuff that you couldn't know. Yep. But then there are things that, like, we find out, oh, this person's mom passed or these people are divorced. You just – you don't put them next to each – in clips next to each other in the edit. Yep. You don't try to – you don't make it look like this couple is in love. Yep. Like, you, you, you know, you – separate them you give them their own parts of the video yep. you know just things like as a storyteller you you need to know this stuff mm-hmm. yeah yeah I, I think all of it is is and i think at the end of the day it makes your couple feel like you're thinking about them you think about not only the film that you're making but also how they're going to be feeling day of the wedding like how are their emotions going to be kept in check or you know sp- sprouting you know and and then also we'll be ready for those moments when mm-hmm. they do you know yeah um, how do you feel like asking, do you feel like this might be uncomfortable for some people to ask about and how would you recommend they kind of just like get over it and so, ask a question in a way that is not weird to them? Uh, I think the question is in a questionnaire, which is helpful because you don't have to just ask them. You're asking them in a questionnaire so they can explain it however they want in a questionnaire. And then when I get to that point, usually I'm like, so uh, next question, uh, you know, are there any family situations? Kind of explain this uh, to me a little bit, and I'll just let them actually. So I won't be like, your mom is divorced and your dad, you know, tried to commit suicide or you know, something yeah. terrible, you know. Um, uh, explain that. To me. I'm like, explain the situation to me, how, you know, you want us to cover, like, certain things, like um, – because then it's just in their own words. Well, how many like, times I don't want to ask them. I don't want the words to even come out of my mouth, really. How many times have you been to a wedding, Jared, where like the portrait session takes – the family portraits takes three times longer mm-hmm. because the dad won't even be in the same right. room as the mom? Right, right, exactly. Like right. that will – because when I see that, I go, well, that's my portrait session. Yeah, yeah. Right, like – I'm not going to tell that person, like, can you tell your dad to grow up? I need por- I have portraits, right? Yep. But I know my film is going to be a lot different. Yep. Yep. So, you know. Totally. And and it just helps you not look like an idiot. Well, and a lot, most of the time people will say, oh, they're divorced, but it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Most of the time it's it's actually fine, but every so often, like, it gives you the opportunity to feel more personal yep. and it's big. If you're not asking the question, you should be asking it. And also in this part of the the uh, questionnaire and the con- conversations, I usually am asking for people's names, like a list of people's names. Um, yeah, it's a good opportunity. Like right after that, I'm like, hey, who is your brother-in-law, sister? Like who are the actual names? And that way, like I've literally been like, this person was introduced to me. I know their name starts with a, you know, J, but I just want to make sure so I can feel confident going up to them and be like, Hey Jacob, we're gonna go, you know, take photos. Like, come this way. 
um, that's super helpful. Just again, it's kind of just covering your butt, getting your basics, like uh, you know, finding out who your vendor, the vendors are. Day of, it's just like basics that you have to have, just in case. I mean, you know? at the end of the day, we're as storytellers, we're telling family stories, and yep. so you got to know the family. Yep. You can't just only focus on the couple. Yep. Yep. Uh, number four is what kind of music do you prefer or enjoy? Um, and this is kind of a hard conversation and it's only gotten really harder in the last couple of years. I think with the emergence of like TikTok, Instagram reels, cause everyone expects you can just use whatever music in the world for their wedding film. People are picky. Um, how, how do we kind of uh, approach the music situation? So I think the biggest thing for us, and I think for most wedding filmmakers, should be you want the person to like the music that seems basic but but it is really the actual goal is like you want this person to not just like it you want it to feel you want them to identify with it you want them to think in their head like this represents me and it's really hard to do that exclusively based on spending time with someone you know yeah you could be like oh like come and do a engagement session with me we love line dancing now, my question is, does that mean you should put line dancing in their film? Mm -hmm. No, I need to know their taste in music, right? So, like, whether it be, like, you read their answer and you're like, this person's trying to show off, right? They're trying to give me a bunch of, like, deep-cut artists that they're into. Or they just clearly don't know anything about music, Yep. right? Which is fine either direction, but it knows, like, it. it helps me know, like, to dig in a little bit more. Like, when I'm, like, going, like, like I'll say, see someone's, they give me a bunch of singer songwriter kind of stuff, or maybe it's like kind of like borderline hipster, but not like crazy, like luminaires, luminaires, mm -hmm. what is it? luminaires, 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 the luminaires. And I'm thinking in my head, like, okay, like if I bring up like that kind of music, Hey, so you said luminaires, you kind of like, what, what about the luminaires? Do you like, do you like, like, Hey ho, that song or whatever, mm -hmm. or is it more like uh, their other songs? Oh no, I just like that one song. Mm -hmm. I was hoping you could put that one specific song in the video, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Versus like, oh, yeah, I know that's the popular one, but I really like singer-songwriter or I like like more earthy. Who else do you like? Oh, I like Mumford & Sons, like this. Oh, there's this artist I really like on Musicbed. Mm -hmm. They're very similar. You might want to check them out. Let me send you a list. Like, it just lets you have the conversation you want to have yep. and kind of fine-tune it a little. It also affects, I think, the way you shoot the wedding. Mm -hmm. Like, if you know – what their tastes are and what they're going to love. Like if this person's like, I love EDM. We've had a lot of people over the years who say they love EDM. Yeah. Right. Which sometimes we do something with, sometimes we don't. I will ask that specific question though in the console. Like, Hey, I saw you, you said you like EDM. Are you telling me you want your wedding film to have EDM? Yeah. Or are you just telling me that? Yeah. Don't assume that person giving you the answer is thinking through their answer and thinking that, yeah, it's twofold. It's 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 what kind of music do you enjoy in general? It mm -hmm. helps us get a sense of who you That's are. That's what we ask, basically. But then also, way. what kind of music? Yeah, it, it does inform what kind of music we're going to use in your wedding yeah. film. Clearly. We don't ask them what wedding songs you want in your wedding film. We mm -hmm. ask them about them. Yeah. And I think that's the most important part of the question. If there's a nuance to it, you might want to tweak. Is like I'm not. I don't think you should ask a person or make them feel like mm -hmm. they can just have the final say on all the music in their like giving a person a, too much control and then ripping it away mm -hmm. is a bad experience for couples mm -hmm. letting them know you're trying to understand them that's a good experience yeah that's what our actual goal is uh, this we, is a really hard question and it just informs um so many decisions you make as the creative um and a, a customer service professional right um what kind of music do you prefer um because at the end of the day, you want, like you, exactly what you said, you want the couple to love the film at the end of the day. That is the most important thing. Now, getting to that point is difficult because you have uh, uh, music licenses you have to deal with. You can't, like you said, you can't just go on to, you know, Apple Music, download a song and use whatever. Um, you have to actually download something. You have to find something that works within the context of like a wedding film. You have to find something like if they hate country music, you obviously don't want to use a country music. So I tell people generally, you can be as involved as you want to be in this process, but I want you to be involved up front because a, again, I want you to love the music at the end of the day that you're going to, that's going to be in your film. I want you to love your film and music is a big part of that. Uh, but then also I don't want to have to re-edit anything yeah. <laughs> that costs me money. Um, 
So trying to solve a lot of problems here up front. Um, and so the way that we do that is that just generally asking what kind of music do they like. Um, but then also we have a lot of disclaimers on our written creative treatment that says essentially you can pick the music through these music groups if you prefer to go that way. I tell people most people don't choose their own music. They give us a genre that they generally like, but if they're gonna be extra picky, they can go on and pick their own song. I let people pick their own song uh, because if they're gonna go that far, then generally they really like music. They have a, a strong preference, um, which is um, you know helpful. And and honestly, I do enough wedding films where I don't care. I don't know if someone wants to pick their own music and they're gonna be hard nosed about it. Great, we'll do it to whatever song you want. We'll deliver it, and then you know I know you're gonna like it at the end of the day. Yeah, there's you know? nothing you can really do if someone. Maybe we differ on that, but no, I I think I basically agree. Yeah, I, I think if I didn't want that result, I wouldn't ask that question. Yeah, like I've I would... had people choose their own music, choose a very specific song, and then complain about it. <laughs> so people are actually crazy when it comes to music. Like I've had people pick very specific songs and then be like. We weren't crazy about the song, and then I go back and email. And I'm like, you chose that song very specifically. We're adamant about it. Again, and though, we use this, it. this goes back to the, even like the schedule or everything. Yeah, it's like you're asking questions to have conversations that will facilitate your butt being covered. That's it. So That's it's it. like when I say it covered my butt. So then she was like, I guess it's good. I do like the song. It's like, yeah, you picked it. So at some point, you liked it. Well, and also when you, I'm gonna charge you more money for it, yeah, you're yeah. not gonna view it as me failing. Yes, that's you screwing up. And, I don't want to be the one who screws up. I want them to be screwing up. Exactly. And I'm not trying to put anyone in that position. Right. But I certainly, I don't want to be in the one that in the, yeah. who's in that position. I want people to feel like I've given them four parachutes before we deliver the film. Like, hey, here's the ripcord. If you want to be involved, here's the ripcord. Like, yeah. you can you can bail out at any point and get involved. Most people are too busy, to be honest, to even be involved. They, they're like... We like Harry Styles' new album. Great, awesome. I can work with that. But just understand, if I pick the song, you're like gonna like it or or pay for it. Well, and <laughs> if you want to have the fact that it's in writing helps yes. a lot. Yes. But then the fact that it's writing and you talked about it in yep. a consultation, yep, covers your butt, right? Yep. And so, like, if you're you're not gonna be. Able, I don't know where the future is in terms of where the wind's gonna blow in yep. terms of picking songs for people and if they're gonna become worse and worse and worse because yep. of TikTok. But I certainly know that if that does happen, I don't want to be the one editing something three times. Yeah. I realized that when I had a bride pick a very specific song and then decide she didn't like it, <laughs> the song that she chose, um, I decided then that this system could never be perfect um, because you're going to always have people like that, um, which I love that bride, actually. I, I thought that bride was awesome. Um, but you know, her bad, you know, then she had to pay to have it changed. She wasn't mad about it. Though. She wasn't that was mad the about it. Is like, so you didn't create an enemy. Right. So I think this part of the system, like you can just root out so many problems. You know, we barely have any problems here compared comparative to how many weddings that we're doing. Um, I think we've really rooted out like, you know, uh, giving people the opportunity to be uh, involved and, in, and, in, you know, we just had someone like, they chose a song and I was like, this is a good song for them. Um, actually, I did have another person recently who was like, this song is sad. And I was like, yeah, it is sad. Like, it's about like a breakup or something. I was like, guys, what are we doing? Why do we choose that song? Get rid of that song. Um, and so, you know, I'll make exceptions if we make a mistake. I think that was a mistake that we made because um, I went through and listened to the lyrics. I'm like, this is not a good fit um, for what we did. But um, at the end of the day, this is going to root out most of your problems by asking. Well, this. the conversation I'm always going towards yeah. with this one is like, you don't want to do that though. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I just, you just trust us. Right. Yeah. 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 Like, oh yeah, I just trust you. All, all of our films on our website are through this music group. Like generally we're picking a genre more yeah, so. It's all good. And, and you know, we want it to be not necessarily cheesy wedding music. We want the music to have its own kind of personality. That's why we don't want to pick top 40 stuff. We want you to listen to the song 
in your film and then when you're in the mall and you hear that song we want you to think about your wedding like not vice versa we don't the, want you to think about we do our the own storytelling we do our yeah. own storytelling with why we pick what we pick yep. and that's part of like i would think music is one of the most important things to our brand and what we yeah. do is like um but it's like we also have a huge range in what we make because we allow the couples we base it on the couples, not mm-hmm. based on necessarily our taste. I think there are things we wouldn't do yep. from a taste standpoint, but in general, like we're trying to always match the couple, which means we have techno and hip hop and all kinds of music. Like there yep. isn't a type of song that's like us. Yeah, it's just yeah. like a. It's our couples, and and it, as long as it's tasteful and cool, we're we're gonna go with it. So, yep. Yep. but yeah, it seems like a basic question, and so the question matters. But I think what's most important about the what music do you like question is what you're using it, what conversations you're using it to facilitate. So I would say yep. if you're asking that question, and you're not following up with your process yep. or, or any of that you're probably you need to use every one of these questions as a jumping off point mm-hmm. to having a good conversation with the couple about how to make them most happy yep yep um and so the last question is kind of more of a um concept i guess it's you want to be able to make comments yeah uh through asking questions kind of what i just right? said <laughs> yeah yeah so so kind of choose your own adventure like there are certain things that are really important to me. How do I make it come off as a question um, when I'm asking the bride certain things? For example, um, I want the room to be clean, the hotel room to be clean. This is a big deal to me. So you wouldn't ask the person, will you clean the room? I won't say, make sure your room is clean, bride, because that would be tacky. Like It would be degrading to her. And honestly, she probably doesn't have a lot of control over it. Um, she probably hasn't thought about it for two seconds. I know all these things, but I would say, you know, probably like, well, what room number are you getting ready in? You know, what's the room situation looking like? She'll be like, oh yeah, we're getting ready in a suite. Um, she might tell me information like that. Be like, okay, that's great. You know, um, are there two separate rooms, one separate room? You know, is, is it going to be a bedroom, like living room Well, situation? even like, think about like, that question, right? How many people are going to be in there? There's like four questions that yep. build into the question. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And so it allows me to say like, you know, generally when we show up in these rooms, they tend to be a little bit of a wrecking ball. Like they tend to be just be like, there's water bottles everywhere. Like we have to spend a lot of our time cleaning up and less time shooting, um, which we're really expensive cleaners. (laughs) You know, you don't want me cleaning. You want me shooting. Um, So what I usually recommend is like have a point person or, or maybe do all you're getting ready in one room and have the other room as like a staging room. Uh, make sure you can ask uh, hotel staff to come up and make your bed in the morning. So it's nice. It's not wrinkled. Like there's a lot of things. Yeah. That let, you can let's do. just, let's dig into that question, right? Sorry. What room are you getting ready in? There's yep. a lot of questions that I would come out of that question. I would, I would ask questions or statements. One of them would be like, like you just said, how you want the room to be clean. Right. I listen, you know, one, you know, just if there's certain things where I want to have the room clean, the other question might be, Hey, listen, oh, are you, you know, earlier you asked them, are you doing a letter reading? Yep. They said, yes, I am doing a letter reading. Okay. Then you asked them, what room are you getting ready in? And they said, one room, not three rooms. So you go, okay, is everyone going to be in that room? Yes, everyone's going to be in that room. Back to the letter reading, Mm -hmm. right? When we do the letter reading, would it be okay if we asked everyone to step out? Or we go to another room. Oh, we don't have whatever. another room. Yeah. Oh, we have nowhere for them to go. Yep. Like all these things. Like yep. there's a lot. You're, you're trying to do a fact finding mission about what your shoot is going to be like. Yeah. Is yep. it going to be messy? Is it going to be clean? Yep. Is it going to be packed? Like something like, what room are you getting ready in? Oh, like you've, maybe you've shot there before. Yeah. Oh, make sure you have them put you near the window mm. when you're doing your like like maybe you always want to tell them that and everything. I would ask them the room first. I would, if I was doing a script, I would say, first I ask them what room they're getting ready in. In Based on that answer, I always say the same friggin' thing, which is tell your makeup and hair person, please set you up near the window. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't just come out of the blue and say that. Yep. I would base it on a set of questions about the space mm-hmm. because people like answering questions. Yeah. Like they don't want to be told what to do. Yeah, yeah. And, and it, 
goes beyond just like room questions. I think yeah, there's a million. That's just a good a practical example. I would say whatever you want to tell the bride, write those things down. Like, hey, these things are important to me and the art that I'm creating. Maybe I have to have things done a certain way. I have to have a, you know, if we're recording audio, like I want it to be good. So we have to find a quiet space. Like I would say um, something that we talk about a lot um, and talked about before the show was portrait sessions, like asking people, you know, trying to get a vibe of like how comfortable they are on camera, maybe being like, so how many times have you guys been on camera together? Or like, did you do an engagement session with the photographer? Did you, yeah, do what was that like? Session? Yeah. Uh, oh, we were really awkward. It's like, you don't necessarily have to be like, how do you want me to interact with you? Cause that's a weird question to answer. They don't even know how to answer it. They don't even know. Like, they're like, well, I mean, I don't know. Like, I guess we're awkward. You want them to be like, oh, we did the engagement session with the photographer and it was hard but at the end we're having a lot of fun so it's like okay now they have a new instilled confidence in being in front of the camera maybe you could get them to do some fun things like have her pick her up or something like that and you could just be like you know generally we let the photographer do their thing but you know in between we might grab you guys for a couple shots you know and they'll be like yeah that sounds great it sounds cool or even okay, just like light. yeah I, I mean, I think a lot of people ask these questions in different ways and yep. different couples yep. but essentially like I'm always going to ask some question around about which the answer specifically is not overly important to me more i'm looking to see if they react really badly to the question not so much that they're going to tell me specifically how to shoot them which is like how comfortable are you guys with pda yep. like like anything from fine with it to we love it is the same answer to me yep. when you when a person responds really badly to a question yep. like i'm very shy not comfortable mm -hmm. you know um or this is another great thing. They say, listen, we really want you to direct us a lot. Yeah. We don't know how to act on camera. They're giving me permission to, to tell them exactly what to do. They're saying, Hey, we, our expectation of hiring you is that when you show up, you're going to make me look good instead of like, we're good. We're going to be happy. Like I know, like, you know, maybe I know the photographer. I know the situation. I know the posing. I wouldn't ask this question, how do you like to interact, to every couple or in every situation. Mm -hmm. But it's a it's a question I would ask in certain situations when I don't know the photographer, I don't know the couple that well. It doesn't really matter so much that I know exactly what their answers are, but that we have a conversation because what I really want to do is tell them basically every couple the same thing. Oh, I'm mostly going to let the photographer kind of run the show. You don't have to worry about having, you know, too many people shouting directions at you. It's not going to be a stressful environment. Is it okay if I just pop in for just a few quick poses? You know, that's all I really want to say. But I don't want to just come out of the blue and say that. I want to talk to them about it and let them know. Yeah. If I can make it seem like everything I'm doing is a response to what they want, yeah. that's always better than just me telling them what I want. And I think that's the critical thing about being a good question asker to couples. It's like making that person feel like you're a good listener instead of this is your show, my process, I'm the artist, I'm really special and imp really special, and really important. No, you're special, you're important. This is about you, the couple. Yep, yep, yep. And, and, and to kind of cap things off, I think always asking permission, asking questions is, is a really big deal. Like asking people, even when you're on site with them, do you mind if I grab like a couple shots of this? This is gonna be real. And then if they're like, they can say yes or no, but if they say yes, like you can do it. Even if it's like, hey, we're pushing on time. Do you mind if I just grab a couple more shots? You're not gonna get in trouble with them. They're not gonna blame you because they said yes. They had the opportunity to turn you down or say yes. Um, so always asking permission throughout the day um, and beforehand to get certain things will always clear things up. Well, even with other vendors, no. like if you say to another vendor, like yeah. they wanted to do X. Yeah. That they're going to be, oh, okay. Yeah. Because because yeah. what a lot of other vendors are concerned with is like they asked another question and they think you're making them do something that they don't want to do. Yes. Yes. Right. And it's like, no, I would never do that. Yeah. Everything I'm at and doing is based on like, it just, didn't, I mean, we all know now. And in today's society, consent is a big deal. <laughs> And I would say it doesn't change with weddings. Like yeah. even something like, can I fix your dress? Mm -hmm. Don't touch people without permission. Yeah. Like literally anything you're doing, can I hold, can I move your dress? Can I hold your rings? Can I like literally just like everything in your relationship with this person is based on questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
So ask good ones, for goodness sakes. Yes. <laughs> Don't just do things. And I would say also same thing with vendors too. But that's another story. <laughs> well, I mean, ultimately, I think a lot of people, they, they, they think they have to present this presentation of what they're going to be doing. And like that's the most effective way to communicate to people. And it's not. The most effective way to communicate with people is to ask them a bunch of good questions and then based on those questions, find ways to ask questions that let you talk about the things you need to talk about. And yeah. that's really what this episode's about. Yep. Yep. So hopefully it's been helpful for you guys at home, listening, YouTube, anywhere you find podcasts as well. Uh, make sure you guys give us a thumbs up, five stars, anywhere you could find podcasts. Uh, that'd be really helpful to others trying to find good education on wedding filmmaking, uh, as well as join our Facebook group. We have about 16,000 strong. Almost 17. Help Almost 17. Okay. Hump. Yeah. Get us over the hump, guys. Um, it's probably the best place where you can go to find uh, good questions about uh, wedding filmmaking. So talk um, to Jared and I, Bobby as well. Talk to the crew. Talk to everyone who's in that community. Um, if you're just going through something, it's a great, great place to get feedback quickly mm -hmm. um and then also subscribe to the wedding film school youtube channel you're probably if you're watching this on youtube you're watching it on the wedding film school show uh we have a youtube channel with uh, 170 thousand um Not quite. subs almost, almost over that hump though almost. um and that's where you can find reviews on gear we do behind the scenes of real weddings uh, it's a great place for education as well Thank you guys for listening to another episode of the Wedding Film School Show. Jason, anything you want to add before we sign off? Have a great year, guys. Don't do drugs. <laughs> See you next time.